How is everybody doing? It's your boy Flip Kiki here, and welcome to the TEC Season 7 Dublade Division Mid-Season Recap. Well, that was a mouthful, but I am returning as your coach of the Philadelphia Flyguns. I know I said HDL Season 3 was going to be the last time, but in the middle of HDL Season 3 and HDL Season 4, I wanted to... Uh, shake the rust off um didn't go that well for those of you that know how that season went that it did not go very well so i wanted to improve my skills and a couple of us from the hdl applied to tec now tec is the in-house draft league for the lcd discord server um i'm gonna link them in the description great place definitely join it besides the draft league there's a bunch of other stuff in there. there's team building help draft help mocks um they do a lot of good stuff you can also just watch what happens in this draft league uh it's pretty entertaining there's a lot of good players um i think out, uh out of the people in the hdl that applied uh me and yarun were the ones that got in um if you remember the season two quarterfinal game, I'll flash that in the top right for people that want to watch that video, especially the TC people that haven't watched the video or the battle even, go watch that video and that battle. Pretty entertaining. Uh, the people that were letting people in, they were on the edge of their seats, they said, uh, and that was one of the reasons me and Yurun got in. But me and Yurun were let in. We got into the Dublay division. So TC set up into three divisions, a big league. So it's there's three 16-team divisions, so there's 48 overall. There's a Hone Edge division, Dublade, and Age Slash. Age Slash is the top super skilled coaches, and the Dublades from last season, the top one and two, the champion and the runner-up that promoted. And Dublade has the champion and runner-up from Hone Edge that promoted, etc. So we got into the middle skill level division, and honestly, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, this is definitely a more serious league, but Yurun and I were entrusted with uh, the duty to bring some heat, and bring some heat we have been doing. So this video is basically, it's going to be longer than most of my videos are. It's going to be less polished. It's going to be a lot of rambling. So strap in. I will separate it into weeks. So this is weeks one through four since it's an eight-week season. So I'm going to go over some of the team building decisions I made, some uh, and just the battle and the implications of the battle. I'm also going to go over my draft and the free agency picks that I make. I'm doing this in basically all one long take. It's probably going to be like a 40, 50-minute video if I had to guess, maybe longer. I honestly don't know. Uh, but for the people that want to stay through this or the people that stay through this whole video, thank you. And uh, I'm pretty excited to just go through how the season has gone so far and for you guys to see a little bit more of a competitive side to me playing. And I'm happy with how it's been going so far. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So we are now on to the draft portion. So for the draft, um, I know I wanted two mons in particular, Zara, Aura, and Scizor. Now, I did get them. Uh, to for a little bit of context, I think I got like tenth or overall tenth or eleventh overall pick, which is not good. Uh, Yurun got like eighth, I think. So I'm also gonna go over a little bit of the stuff Yurun did. So Yurun got like eighth, I think. He took Tapu Koko first overall, and I actually ended up getting Zero Aura. I forget the points, but I remember roughly the order of what I picked everything in. So I got Zero Aura with my first overall pick. I want to use Zero Aura. I know Zero Aura on Mon Lol. Zero Aura's pretty iffy sometimes uh 17 points is one point over than i would value zero or some people say 17 some people say it's like 13 or 14 i think it's a 16 point mon if you use it properly if you try and use it as a wall breaker it's like 13 or 14 it's not a wall breaker it's utility pivot it's a really good speed tier i i like it for what it does it can also dish out some damage i like it for what it does it's not an oko machine right it punches some holes and sets up things for late game scenarios like scissor for example scissor sets up a lot of bullet punch late game scenarios it also u-turns all over the place as you know i like playing pivot hyper offense that is my style so zero or scissor is a very good double combo with a lot of pivot and some power uh and just the utility scissors a defogger scissor gets knockoff scissor gets some setup it gets roost, it can, you can use a wall, you can use it as a late game option, or both. Like, Scizor is a very solid mon if you know how to use them properly. So, I got those two with my first two picks. Pretty solid. I liked that start. Um, another thing that I like to do, uh, it's kind of just a habit. I don't like using mons that I've used before. So, 
I kind of gravitate towards things I've never drafted before. So with my third pick, I wanted a fairy, and I've really never ended up with a super solid fairy. And I got Togekiss with a third overall. Third, the third pick for my team as Togekiss might have been a little bit overvaluing Togekiss, maybe by a round. But Togekiss, early Scarf Togekiss, can just straight up win you games. Nasty Plot Togekiss is great. Togekiss gets Wish. It's also a defogger. And it's also a solid fairy and it's my flying type at the same time so the problem with toe as a flying type is it doesn't threaten grounds really because it doesn't get ice beam or thunderbolt even so i know a thunderbolt would threaten a ground type but you know what i mean it doesn't get good doesn't get as good coverage as you think it would it does get things like psy shock and extra sensory it gets shadow ball but Sometimes it's a little iffy, so I might have overvalued it, but I still think Togekiss was really important to this team and also gets Baton Pass, so it can also help pivot. So I have, I was starting with three very good mods. Now, the important thing with Zara Aura is you need things to threaten ground types. I had an immunity and I have a neutrality. You need a grass type and a water type that will threaten out the grounds, or you need an ice type kind of, but mm, ice is iffy sometimes. I want a grass type first. Now, my original plan was to take Tangrowth, okay? That was the original plan. That did not happen, okay? I folded. Tangrowth was there. It was open. Fourth round Tangrowth is pretty respectable. I didn't take it. Why I didn't take it? Beyond me. Tangrowth was on my draft plan. It's a really good regenerator pivot. It's a grass type that packs power to threaten out grounds. I just didn't take it. I wanted the offensive power and a bulky grass, so I took... Mega Venusaur. Now, Mega Venusaur is a grass type with offensive power. But the problem is, unlike Tangrowth, A, it doesn't have Regenerator, and B, it's not resistant to ground. It is neutral, and my water wouldn't be resisting ground. Therefore, I could there'd be a chance I have no ground resists on a Zera or a team. Basically a death sentence. I regretted it a probably solid minute and a half after I took Mega Venusaur. Big fold. So I knew my Grace Transactions were going to be very important. Um, for fifth pick, I think my draft plan had Chandelure, but I realized Blacephalon was still there and I took Blacephalon. Um, Blacephalon's great. Blacephalon, spoiler, up until this point has been the only mod I brought to every single game. Uh, Blacephalon's a really, really good mod. I really like Blacephalon. It's weird. Sometimes you'll bring it and it'll do absolutely nothing, as in like it just won't hit the field, but it'll just sit there in the back and wait and wait and wait and wait and then it'll come out and then it'll blow a hole in something that'll go back and then it'll wait and then it will just clean late like Blacephalon is a really good mod and it worked well it's adding to the firepower of this team after Blacephalon Greninja was open so I took Greninja Greninja really good water type I need the water type to threaten out the grounds and even more pivot with U-turn Greninja was basically a no-brainer there uh seventh overall I forget what I took but I remember I remember what the plan was going to end up being. This was basically my main core. Oh, no, no, no. No, here I took Conk, and then I took Greninja. So I took Conk 6, because Conk, Conk Kelder dropped to round 6. Conk Kelder is insane. I love Conk Kelder. Conk Kelder, it just busts things open, and it's shockingly bulky. Like, Conk Kelder is kind of stupid in draft if you know how to use him properly and have a proper team around him. And now my team is looking exactly how I wanted to. Blacephalon, Conkildur, Greninja, three really good, powerful mons. Mega Venusaur, I still did not want. Zeraor punches holes. Togekiss can punch some holes. And Scizor is an all-around good pivot. I needed some bulk. Now, I think the Mega I ended up taking was Mega... Oh, no, I had Mega Venusaur. So the rest of this draft... It was like stuff I kind of didn't want. Um, I'm trying to remember what I ended up taking. There's probably a mon that I literally use or have used that I'm just not throwing up right now. And I'm drawing a massive blank. Like, I'm going to be honest, I'm drawing a huge blank right now. Okay, I'm back and I stopped drawing a blank. So I forgot what the rest of the draft looked like, if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know what I drafted in the Celebi spot. Oh no, I think I remember. So this was Mega Venusaur, this was an Arc result, and I drafted Dragalge and Perugly. But... Eventually, in Grace, I changed Mega Steel. I changed Mega Venusaur to Mega Steelix, and I changed Absol. I eventually changed the Mega Venusaur to Mega Absol, and I changed it again to Mega Steelix. And then I changed the Arctozol, which I just drafted randomly for Selby because I don't want to sell these a Grass type. And then got rid of the Mega Venusaur. Um, 
And this was my original team. It was Zara Oris, or Togekiss, Mega Steelix, Placephalon, Kelder Greninja, Celebi, Dragalge, Perugly. I waited until between week three and week four to make the changes that I did end up making. This team did have some flaws. Certain cores, it's your straight up loss to. Togekiss as a solo carrying fairy is like, eh, I didn't have a bulky water. Celebi as a bulky grass is not very good. Uh, Perugly is just my normal. It's kind of cheap. Dragalge is my dragon. is eh. Uh, it, it looked okay, it just lacked considerable bulk, and it lacked recovery. And of course, my week one that I needed to play also didn't have a good ground type, and my two steals were kind of weird. So the week one I needed to play was Brayden. Now, Brayden had one of the uh, pivot hyper FN streams of uh, teams of my dreams. He had he has Mega Mawile, he has Latios, he has Darmanitan, he has Weavile, he has Nidoqueen, he has Rotom Wash, he has Swirlix to set up webs, he has Cray Dilly, he has a bunch of really cool stuff. So I needed to prep accordingly. Now this was week one and I needed to make an impression. I ended up bringing Celebi, Mega Steelix, Greninja, Bocephalon, Perugly, Conkelder. I would say two this day, the jankiest team I have brought so far in these four weeks. Uh, as you could see already, Celebi was banded. Now, Cel now banded Celebi would just Oko Rotom Wash with Leaf Blade. It did like 90% minimum to Latios with Sucker Punch, but would it kill? But if I ended up, I didn't have rocks on anything. But like 90% minimum to a Latios, which put it in Perugly Fake Out range. It put it in a it put it in Greninja Water Shuriken range. It put it in range for a lot of interesting things. Uh, Mega Steelix was just clicking moves there. Uh, I don't remember what the game plan specifically with Mega Steelix was. Mega Steelix was just a switch in for a bunch of things. It was just kind of there. Uh, it was a really weird bring. I could have ended up not bringing it probably for something more productive, but it was just kind of there. Conk was going to be one of my major damage dealers, just standard guts conk. But the more important thing was conk was my defogger this week. Uh, Steelix, or um, Scizor was really bad because of Darm, and Togekiss was questionable because of Mawile and Weavile just there. So my my soul defogger was conk this week conk was just a really good bring and you'll see conk ended up putting in a bunch of really good work this game but conk was my defogger it had cc mock punch and knockoff uh it was just standard guts conk this is my favorite set i brought this week though uh rocky helmet thick fat uh perugly it was at first like full bulk perugly it was like max hp max bedef we were trying to see if it could take it it would take a two co from darm it did it. However, even with Rocky Helmet no bulk, it was still a reliable banded Weavile triple axle switch in at least once. It could switch into one triple axle, get a bunch of chip off, and then fake it out. Fake out plus the triple axle chip obviously wouldn't kill the Weavile because Perug was kind of weak, but the max attack made the U-turns be beefy and the taunts were great, or the knockoffs were great. Also, it had taunt. The main problem with this team was he had Porygon 2 and Gorgite. Was this? Yeah, he had Gorgite to Porygon 2. Um, he didn't end up bringing the Gorgeist, but the Porygon 2 is a problem because most of this team could not break it, or at least Conkeldor couldn't, because if Conkeldor was in on Porygon, Porygon would switch to Latios, or it would switch to uh, Gorgeist, and I didn't really have anything to switch into those things, so I had this. Now, this Perugly was meant to do a lot of things. This Perugly was my lead, because Swirlix... It, Swirlix was scary because Swirlix, Swirlix runs Focus Sash Endeavor webs. So it would click webs, turn one, you would hit it, it would bring it down to its sash, and then it would have Unburden now, so it would be fast enough to outspeed you, click Endeavor the next turn, and kill you. Or it would bring you down to one HP and make your mod basically crippled. So I wanted to try and run Steelix, because I almost tried to run like turn one win D Dance Steelix. Doesn't work because Swirlix just kills it. So this thing actually taunts. The Swirlix, it outspeeds Swirlix, taunts it, doesn't put the webs up, and then gets a free, or it fake outs it, and then breaks the sash, and then it taunts it the next turn. If he switches in anything that wants to fuck with Perugly, it gets taunted, and then you get a new U-turn or a knockoff on it. It was it was a really useful set. Um, and then Blacephalon, Por Porygon 2 is a Blacephalon switcher no matter what. So whenever Porygon 2 is obviously still going to come into Blacephalon, I knock it off, doesn't have its evil aid anymore, it's going to die to stuff that's going to start hitting it, I can start putting it into recover change, even with evil aid, Bandit Celebi actually put it into recover change with Leaf Blade, and if I got one crit, i kill the Porygon, so that was also really good. Uh, Greninja was a late game win con as usual, as Scarf Greninja is, it was meant to pivot around, this also had Culberberry, only for 
Mega Mawile Sucker Punch. If for some reason Bocephal was my last man left with Mega Mawile, I, w I kept trying to beat it. It just, Sash wasn't as useful as Culber because Sash, I could get, end up getting it broken and then I just lose. So Blacephalon was a potential win con with Culber. Uh, Mawile would try and sucker punch it. I would live because of Culber and then I would flamethrower it and the Mawile would die. This was max HP Blacephalon, mind you. This thing needed all the HP to live that sucker punch because um, I only need a certain amount of special attack to kill the Mawile and it was just meant to come in and bait the Porygon. So this was a little, this was a janky team. So we'll get into the game now. Um, he led Rotom, I re led Perugly. Uh, he did bring the Swirlix, which was nice. I get the free f fake out and stuff. Um, I get a free knockoff on Rotom that early, which was really, really nice. Uh, the only problem was Perugly got Wisped, which was a little iffy. Uh, going to Conk hard here was also iffy. I didn't want a bunch of chip on Conk because it couldn't end up taking a Latios thing later if I had chip like that. Um, Mawile and Steelix, sub Maw was... This was a very good bring on him. He brought Focus Punch Mega Mawile, which dealt with Steelix like that. Uh, 96%. 96% Focus Punch on Steelix. Um, I think I wouldn't have lived that if I didn't run max HP. So props to Steelix. Uh, Sucker Punch again. Uh, Steelix is just dead. So Blacephalon comes in to scare it out. Even if he tried to sucker me there, his Mawile was gone. And I flamethrower just to start conditioning that Porygon, and he stays in. He had no reason to not stay in. I knock him off, he teleports. And sorry to that Porygon. Now, Rotom's going to come in, and Selby came in on Rotom every time. The first time, you U-turn. The second time, you Leaf Blade. That's what I learned in Mox. Starting to do Mox, that, by the way, that that basically revealed I was banded. Bandit Selby is not normal at all. But that U-turn just revealed that I was banded. Uh, this comes in. I fake it out again for free chip. It's probably just going to try and start recovering. I'm going to U-turn back out. In the co oh, I taunt it so it can't recover. And then I'm going to U-turn back out into Conk because he obviously has to switch now. Or I go Blacephalon again. Yeah, I go Blacephalon again. Now he has to eat a flamethrower on something. And this Porygon's going to go down. So I handled the Porygon the best I could have possibly handled it. Uh, didn't really get to do anything to my team. Rotom's going to come in. It's going to be scary. So the, the thing was that was you're like, okay, I could have just stayed and click Shadow Ball there. Because my Bocephalon wasn't max special attack and I didn't know this Rotom spread, I calced it and at plus one, if this was like max HP, max Bidef Rotom, I did, it was a roll and I didn't kill the Rotom and I didn't know the spread. So I didn't want to risk my Bocephalon dying for no reason because then I couldn't, I possibly didn't have a way to kill Mawile because Steelix was now dead so it wasn't worth the risk when I could just go hard Celebi and threaten something out and do massive damage to something with a leaf blade so I just go hard Celebi here and now I'm just gonna click U-turn oh, I click U-turn because even if he does switch I have Conk as well he volt switched on me I thought he was gonna switch there um I should have just leaf bladed but this is going to come in. I'm just going to sack the Perugly because this thing was just going to delete something. Greninja is going to come in and I'm going to click, I think, U turn again. Oh, I click Scald. Uh, that's fine because Scald is going to do the burn, also helps, but the burn doesn't really matter here because Scald just kills twice anyway. So the burn had no point. I'm Scarf, so I have to switch out. Celebi's going to come in now. The Draco is going to do big damage, but I know I'm going to live it. Celebi's a little bulky. Sucker Punch isn't going to kill, but it's going to do a crazy amount of damage. So it's going to put it into Mach Punch range, which is the important thing. Greninja's going to come in, threaten another U-turn. I'm going to U-turn again. Oh, I Scald here. Oh, that Scald was a roll. I would have, thinking right now, I would have U-turned, but I just Scald twice, and Weavile's gone now. Um... Him not bringing Darm was huge. Scarf Darmantan ran through this team. Uh, but I could only prep for so much. With Hyper Offense, you just can only prep for so much. That was the turn right there. I forgot that I just crit that Needle Queen. So we ran through the rest of the game. If that Needle Queen didn't get crit, he clicked Thunderbolt that turn. Thunderbolt kills Greninja. Needle Queen's down to like 70% or down to like 30%. It takes 70, it's down to like 30%. His best play, no matter what I bring in, my best play is to bring in Conk. His best play is to sack Nido Queen. Now, whether I click CC, I probably click CC in that situation. I click CC if he decides to bring in Mawile for some reason. I click CC. Nido Queen is sacked. Then he can bring in Mawile. He sucker punches my Conk. I could, uh, but I would have to predict to go into Blacephalon. And then I click Shadow Ball 
or, or I have to click flamethrower. Actually, there was a chance I win. If I go conk and he goes, we didn't think about that. I don't know how we didn't think about that. But it was if he played correctly, the game was very much in his favor to win in this situation. If he played correctly, if he didn't, I win. So it was the the rest of the game came down to a 50-50 if it wasn't for that crit. Now, the crit did happen. Greninja, I'm just going to let Greninja go because now with that scald, his team is in Mach Punch range. So Konka is just going to close the game out with Mach Punch, which fine by me. I could have technically closed the game out with Placephalon if I really wanted to. Oh, this was actually Spex Gladius, so no, I couldn't have. Um, I would have taken a 1-0 if I tried to close it with Placephalon. Um, but I took the 2-0 instead, which was the better play. Conk just closes it out. That was a well-played game. It was close. And, well, I realized what I was going to be facing in this league. People are playing very competently. People are playing well. So next week, the next week, I was slated to play Guller. Now, let me go find Guller's team. So I might have just flashed how uh, how well I did but Guller, Guller's team smacks me. That game ended, and I went to go look, and I realized I can't beat this team. Uh, Lando I, Kira, Metagross, Mega, Mega Stoice is already, like, fucking frightening. And then he has Umbreon, Coffer, Grigus. We'll get to that later. Nihiligo is really good if played properly, and Chestnut completely brings by Zara Aura. He also has Rabu. Rabu could be really good. So, like... I realized I had this was probably one of the worst matchups I'd ever have to prep for. This matchup's like 80-20. It's really, really bad. Uh, Lando, I just run through my whole team. Uh, but the main problem in Mach that we found was Kofagrigus Umbreon. I have nothing to break it. Nothing. If Kalk is in on Umbreon, it goes into Kofagrigus. Culber Berry Kofagrigus eats the, eats the knockoff. And now what do I do? So... I had to end up thinking of something mildly creative, but like, I mean, I had a Solve Vescon Kelder. We'll do, we'll, we'll start with a Solve Vescon Kelder. A Solve Vescon Kelder could 1v1 Lando I. Lando I would try and hit it with Psychic. When Earth Power plus a Psychic from Lando I had a chance of not killing Kong Kelder. It was a roll in my favor to live Earth Power plus Psychic from sheer force Max special attack, modest Lando I. Don't ask how that happens with Assault Vest Conk Elder, but it does, and I just kill it with Ice Punch. So, I needed knockoff still. I needed Drain Punch and Mock Punch. So, it's like, it was a really, really bad matchup. My only win con was Expert Belt Nasty Plot Togekiss. That was my only win con. What I would have to do would condition him into I either A, I pray he doesn't bring Umbreon or Kofagrigus, or B, I condition him into switching his Nihiligo into this Togekiss, and I Psy shock him on the switch, and the Nihiligo dies. Then, the the team has now opened up where a Nasty Plot hopefully wins me the game. I'm not running Air Slash because I needed these three coverage moves. I, that was my, that was it. The things Togekiss killed, Greninja died to, and the things Greninja killed, Togekiss died too. So Greninja could win the game if it was Lando I and Nihiligo left. And Togekiss could win the game if it was Kyurem, Megastois, and Umbreon left. And Kofagrigus. So that was the problem. They didn't overlap. They didn't kill the things. Zero or was the Jack Pack uh, close combat um, because I could pivot on Lando I once at least. Uh, just close combat on it and then go hard come Kelder and threaten it out if I needed to. But Cephalon was Spec's trick. Uh, the Again, one of my only ways I could win was tricking my specs onto Umbreon and crippling it to where a choice Umbreon can't do anything. But you'll see that did not happen. Uh, we needed Metal Coat on Scizor for a calc. I forget what it was, but it was just U-turning and bullet punching basically the entire game. It had to be my Defogger, uh, just in case he ran rocks on the Illigo. Uh This thing was, again, my only way to stop being Illigo. This is my Nihiligo switch in every single time. But if you click Meter Beam on the Scissor switch in, I lose. So what I needed to do to win, I needed to trick the specs onto Umbreon. I needed this to 1v1 Lando I. I needed this to Psy Shock the Nihiligo on the switch and get the nasty plot off and clean. I needed this to... It, everything needed to go right. I'm going to tell you right now, it didn't. Because Guller's a really good player. And you need to play like... 30% competently to prevent everything I need to go right to go right the matchup was just it was just not there he led Stoice which 
good for him. I mean, I, I Plasma Fist turn one, even if Lando I comes in, I'm not choiced. So I could still eject peck on him if I really want to early. Conk switches in. That makes the rolls a little complicated. I knock off just to get rid of the Culverberry. Um, it only does 20%, even though I knocked it off. He's just texting me at this point. Uh, it still lives a Psychic from that range at least. Wisp on Togekiss is not bad. I threaten this out with the Shadow Ball. Uh, I, I'm still going to click Shadow Ball just if he stays in, but he knew that was coming. Uh, I'm going to Nasty Plot on this because, I mean, what's the point in not? Uh, I'm going to D-Gleam now, which again is fine. That's good chip on Nihiligo. Nihiligo now dies. Just kidding. There's a Wish. So, like, that's that's what just kept happening. Like, that that's how this matchup would go. Those switch-ins, I didn't have anything to switch into what he switched into. It was just, it just wasn't working. Water Pulse is going to do big damage and confuse Scizor, and Scizor is going to hit itself. Like that, it's, that's just how it was going. Uh, this guy also hacked out Yurun the week before. I'm just going to let this run because there's not much going on about this. He just played well, and I couldn't break the team. So, uh, it's... It's, it's just how it is. Um, he out-hacks Yurun. Uh, the Neo Ligo switched on the trick. I thought Umbreon was coming in there, and he gave me a scarf, and he's just going to kill that. So it, it just be like that. It just be like that. It, it. It's unfortunate. Yurun missed like eight moves week one against this guy. He got the confuse on his like metal sound, throat spray, Celesteela, and then Celesteela hit itself. Um, he got like a crit or two. Yurun didn't get defense drops when he needed it on the stuff. Like it was... It was unfortunate. At least I got the close combat eject pack off. That was nice. Um, but the problem was the team comp was just really iffy. And I was looking at the remainder of my matchups and they just weren't, they just weren't working. Like I realized I had no shot in the rest of my matchups. I didn't have no shot, but it was going to be an uphill battle. It was going to be prepped like this every single week. Like we spent like over five hours prepping for this game because we did like six mocks and they all went way too long and they all ended up in me having to play absolutely out of my mind to win. That was the only chance. I'm going to sack Zara Aura here. Uh, he rock polishes too, and that's also just GG. Uh, Green Ninja doesn't outspeed. Uh, it's... This, this was just GG at this point. At least I killed Juan Mon, and I didn't get 6-0'd. Uh, other than that, like, Guller, shout out to Guller. He played really well. Um, he's the one seed actually going into midseason, so shout out to him. He made a really good team, and he's just an all-around really good player. Also, just stand-up dude. 5 um, owed me and was the most respectful guy ever. So This week told me I need to make changes. However... I didn't make them between week two and three because I had a trade I almost made. Me and Beal Pawn almost traded Scissor for Slowbro, but then the team wasn't working when I did that. Uh, I almost made an extra drill Sandcore team, but I only get five changes and I couldn't remake a team around the sand. Didn't work. I almost made a uh, Zardex team with Greninja without sand. Didn't work. I almost made a Mega Slowbro team with like Comfey as my best fairy. That wasn't going to work. Uh, I wanted to fit Primarina on the team, but whenever I fit Primarina on the team, none of the good, all the grounds left, grounds left were bad, and all the megas left were bad. But if I got a good ground, then all the megas and the fairies were bad, and then if I got a good mega, all the fairies and the grounds were bad. So it was just nothing was working. So I left it because my matchup the next week wasn't that bad. My matchup the next week was lucas now lucas has this team here which is set up the team he has lando t what i mean it's just a scarf but lando t can run set up mega gyarados clicks dragon dance and kills you slow king pivots around rotom heat he has sword puff belly drums sweeps you spectrier sweeps you balloon can run sword stand broom can sword stand broom can run set up though fortress put sticky webs up salamence dragon dance sweeps you kecleon assault fest so it's like he had a lot of very scary setup months also don't mind how the types are messed up here but very scary setup months, okay? Especially the horse. Week two, he 6-0 swept someone with the horse. He let some, he set up on someone's blissy and just clicked Dark Pulse until he won. I wasn't going to get swept by Spectrier, okay? That was goal number one. Don't get swept by Spectrier. Goal number two, don't get swept by this. Goal number three, don't get swept by this. Goal number four, don't let this pivot out the fuck on my team. So I had a few ideas. Idea number one, the Spectrier counter. Assault Vestragalgy with Scale Shot. This attack investment let Scale Shot guaranteed with two hits break the sub on Max HP, Max Bedef, or Max, or Max HP, 
Spectre. If he ran max HP, max defense Spectre, he wasn't going to kill Dragalge no matter what anyway, because he's not going to have the special attack investment to do so. So, and then he doesn't have Spadef investment, so then it takes big damage from Dracos. So there was no way Spectre could 1v1 Dragalge. If Spectre came in, Dragalge switched in and clicked Scale Shot until it died. Or as long as it was putting subs up. Uh, I clicked Sludge Wave, I think, one or two times because I thought he was just going to switch or I thought Sludge Wave was going to kill. I didn't calc it. Uh, and I didn't want to miss a Scale Shot. Uh, we found out I can miss a Scale Shot and Dragalge still 1v1 the Spectre. That's how good of a counter it was. Um, and that was Dragalge's entire purpose. If it 1v1 the Spectre and traded, it did its job because the rest of my team could deal with his team. Shuckleberry's Zara Aura could take an EQ from Mega Gyarados and chip back crazy with Plasma Fist, especially if it was chipped before because it switched into rocks, Plasma Fist would kill because Steelix was my lead. It would just click rocks on whatever he would decide to lead. Uh, Breloom was a possible lead. If it spored me, whatever. Um, if he led Kecleon, cool. If he led Rotom, cool. So I just get rocks down. Rocks down against his team were very, very important because he I just needed him to get chipped. I needed Lando to be chipped. I needed Gyarados to be chipped. I needed Mence to be chipped. Mence would probably be Boots, but if it wasn't, cool. Uh, he also didn't run Boots Rotom the week before, so I knew there was a chance he was going to run Boots Rotom again. Rocks would be great. Crunch Body, Press Gyro Ball, it literally just with this defensive spread, it was all HP, all defense, and all spadef. Just a bunch of crazy defensive spread. This thing could 1v1 any Mon and his team, but it could only just 1v1 it. But as you'll see, he didn't take the 1v1s, and the Spectre and, and Steelix was just like clicking buttons. Steelix would, if he didn't want to hit Steelix, Steelix could just click buttons on the whole team. Scarf, Lando, EQ, 3 co. Waterfall, Mega Gyarados at plus 1, 2 co easy so it's like this thing just clicked buttons and if the things were setting up on it if things were fast and set up on it gyro ball does even more damage so nice scarf greninja for the third week in a row i needed it for spectre air it, i couldn't outspeed spectre air if i wasn't scarf so i outspeed spectre air and pivot around on his team i came with greninja all i know how to play is scarf greninja and it just does the job every time it comes um trick Bocephalon, again tricking Tricking something would have been nice. Uh, so, I don't know the specific reason. Um, with this spread, if I killed something, it would get a speed boost instead, which would help it sweep. Uh, Shadow Ball killing something could just end up ending the game because I'll get speed boosts and it's specs boosted, so it's like I'm plus one, plus one. So, it, it basically just gives Blacephalon a quiver dance on a kill, mind you. That's pretty nice. Uh, Scizor was lefty's defog. It was he was kind of bulky, but he had attack investment, so bullet punch would two co something. I forget what it was, but U turn again. I mean, it's pretty standard Scizor set, standard Trick Specs Blacephalon set, standard Greninja Scarf. But it's usually it was mainly this set and this set that were the important ones this battle, and then this one would maybe put in some work. Uh, I honestly forget how the entire battle went, so we'll, we'll just go here. A uh, Breloom on Steelix turn one. I'm gonna be honest, I forgot about Spore. So. Steelix gets spored. He goes into Lando T. I'm praying I wake up. I don't. He U-turns on me. I don't know why he didn't EQ me there. He's just, I think he's just trying to drop my attack. Thank goodness I wake up there. Because, oh, I just reset it. Thank goodness I woke up on that turn. Because Gyarados Megas and clicks D-Dance the next turn. And I'm going to be honest right after this turn where it mega didn't click d-dance i thought i lost when i clicked south rex here because i forgot what i thought body press did was body press switched the defense stat with your attack and then the attack modifiers dropped it it just uses the defense so if my defense is dropped then it does less damage so I thought the defense was then counted as attack, and then the modifiers apply to attack, since that is now my new attack stat. That's not how it works, thankfully. 30% roll on this body press. I thought I just lost. Um, to be honest, if he D-danced, the body press didn't kill, and then he waterfall kills me the next turn. 
To be honest, I don't even know if plus three waterfall killed Steelix. I don't know why I was so panicked. I think I just still win this 1v1. But if, bot if plus three waterfall does kill Steelix from here, he would have been in scissor bullet punch range anyway, and this would have been dealt with. But Steelix would have been dead. And you'll see Steelix being alive is very important. Spectre comes in, so Dragalge comes in no matter what. Uh, this was a no-brainer. The substitute comes up. He clicks Calm Mind. That's cool. I'm just going to click Dragon. I'm just going to click Scale Shot until you die. Like, that's just how it goes. So, I get the Defense Drop. Defense Drop doesn't matter against Spectre. He willows me. And so I do less damage with Scale Shot. I'm fine. I don't care. I'm going to be honest. I thought Sludge Wave was going to kill from this range. I forgot. Uh, of sludge bomb dark pulse is going to do nothing because this is assault vest and like max pdf i forgot ghost resist poison so sludge wave is just going to resist and he's not going to die uh he says he threw i don't think he threw i think i kind of won in prep here um dragalgy just blanked this thing i could have killed that one turn earlier and not take as much chip on dragalgy but the play here would have been to sack dragalgy anyways um so he's just going to switch into slow king i'm going to get a free u-turn on whatever he goes into uh, I'm going to go back into Placephalon because now I wanted to trick this. Or I wanted to... Specs Placephalon could live a Shadow Ball from Slow King. And do crazy amounts of damage to the Slow King. Uh, and what I realized here was... What I should have done here is just click Shadow Ball again. Because if I click Shadow Ball again... Um, Rotom switching into those rocks plus Specs plus the plus one... I might have just won if he didn't go Brulum right after. I, I don't know. Uh, I should have just clicked Shadow Ball again here. Oh, I did. Uh, it kills Rotom. So Rotom switching into Rocks is nice. I don't know why I didn't click it again there. I could have just clicked it again. But I didn't. Uh, he's going to Volt Switch now. Now it comes to the part of the battle where I just kind of read him over and over again. I get the knock. I'm going to go into Steelix now and face tank. I mean, he actually U-turns on me. But then he's going to go into Breloom. Uh I think the Spore is coming again. He mock punches me. I'm just going to body press him because what is he going to do? Even if he goes into this, I have crunch for it. I'm just going to go to Placephalon now because that was the most obvious switch. He goes to Rotom and just kills the Rotom. Um, I flamethrower there, which was the mistake. I should have Shadow Ball because now if I was locked into Shadow Ball, this was at 60%. If I got a good roll with Berloom chipped and with Lando chipped, the game just ends. And Blacephalon gets the clean. I still went in a 4-0 here, actually. But I could have done it a little bit better. I think Lano's coming in. Um, I knock it off again, just in case that thing stayed in. Because that thing was Assault Vest. Uh, Scizor's in. It's going to eat the EQ. It's fine. I take two. This is a free bullet punch on anything he decides to switch in. Uh, he's probably going to go Slow King again. Yeah, he goes Slow King again. Uh, I'm going to U-turn out in the Steelix. I go to Zera Aura. Oh, yeah, because Zera Aura takes anything for free. And it gets Flamethrower. Uh, and it gets knockoff, but I Volt Switch, thinking he's going to go to Breloom. Go to Greninja now. Uh, the Psychic is immune to the Greninja. I'm going to U-turn again into Steelix to eat the Sludge Bomb that's coming. Another immunity read. Uh, I could have just, I thought he was going to keep switching into Breloom, and he didn't to let the Slow King heal. But it is what it is. Breloom comes in, and he Bullet Seeds me. I don't know why he didn't mock Punch me. He Bullet Seeded me. And then Blacephalon comes in to close the game because he can't mock punch me. So it'd be like that. Uh, I went in prep there. Uh, I played a little iffy in the middle. I was over predicting a little bit too much, but that's just how that went. But after that, the free agency transactions came into effect. Now, these were the mons I kept. Zero Aura, Scissor, Toad, Kiss, Blacephalon, Conkelder were the mons I kept. I started with 10. I was able to use 5. No trades happened, which probably would have been a little bit nicer, but the stuff I wanted, the people weren't going to give away. So, I kept Zero Aura, Scissor. <laughs> people were kind of iffy that I kept the Zero Aura, I know. But I want to play through with the Zero Aura and see how I do with it. I wanted to keep Conk no matter what, because Conk, even though I didn't bring it, to the next game or the last two games that I've played. Conk on the bench is still frightening. Scizor puts in a lot of work. Toga Kiss is great. Bacephalon I have now brought to all four games. What did I need now? I needed a bulky water. I needed a bulky grass. I needed a ground type. I needed a mega and I needed a normal type. And I needed some form of pivot. Again, the old team ideas were still floating in the air. And then the most magical thing happened. Jam 
dropped Zygarde 50%. Let me say that again. Jam dropped Zygarde 50% for Mega Garchomp. Thank you, don't mind if I do. The second that happened, that was now the good ground type I needed. Because the problem with the ground types that were left, the three ground, the three high point ground types that were left were Excadrill, Diggersby, and Dugtrio, which are kind of weird. So, those were solid ground types. This solved my dragon problem and my ground problem at the same time. And it's a really fucking good mon. It is Zygarde 50%. It's fantastic. So I was like, what? Yes, it gives me more bulk. It gives me setup. It gives me a ground type. It gives me a dragon type. It's, yeah. The problem is, it was expensive. And the bulky grasses that were left weren't that good. But the waters that were left were like Primarina, Slow King, Mega Slowbro. So I considered Mega Slowbro. Uh, to be honest, I could have still taken Mega Slowbro in this situation. But I decided to go Slow King instead. I've never used Slow King. Um, but I decided to go with him because... I, losing Celebi lost my Psychic type. I needed a bulky water. But the thing compared for Mega Slowbro to, to Slow King was I didn't have a bona fide Spadefmon now that Dragalge was gone. So Slow King is now my Spadefmon. I have Slow King as my bulky water. I have Zygarde. Where's my grass type? My boy Terry. If I can't have Tangrowth, I can have the next best thing in Tangela. It was like five points. Tangela can still pack kind of a punch. I forget what Tangela's attacking stats are, but Tangela has like mildly decent attacking stats, really good grass type pivot, can fuck with things with Leech Eat and stuff. It's a good utility bring, and if something's really scary, spamming grass, ground moves or water moves, I have a Tangela. An Eviolate Tangela is now my Dracovish counter because I play Dracovish week, eight, week eight, and I didn't have one with the old team, so that's not an auto loss anymore. Uh, besides that, those are the three main important mons, my grass, my water, and my new ground type. Mega-wise, I was now, I was grasping a little bit, because I didn't know what to take. I didn't have many, I have what, here I have 10 points left to spend, and I need two mons. So, I didn't have a, I didn't have a dark type, so, Mega Absol's back. Uh, Mega Absol's probably the most iffy thing I took. Now, the next thing I'm saying might look the most iffy, but... I kind of just needed Mega Absol. There was really no other option I needed to take it because I didn't have a Dark type. I didn't have a Mega. I could have gone with no Mega, but going with no Mega is really risky. Mega Absol eats Knockloss for free. Uh, it could set up. It has Baton Pass, so it can also pivot. It has good utility, really good coverage. You go physical or special or mixed. It has a lot of options. The problem with this, I have the pivot. I have the setup. I have the bulk. What I don't have... I still have my three defoggers. What I don't have is rocks <laughs> or a normal type. And the only remaining normal type that gets rocks that was cheap enough was Dunsparce. Someone actually dropped Dunsparce. The guy I played the week before, Lucas, he dropped Dunsparce for Kecleon. So, da -da, Dunsparce is now mine. <laughs> Let's go. We pop off for Dunsparce. I want to bring it at least once. Dunsparce gets rocks. It gets some setup. It has Serene Grace. It's got like base 100 HP. It gets like weird stuff. So I can see me bringing it like once. And if I get, if I'm in the playoffs, I'm very tempted to bring Dunsparce to every playoff game. Now that might shoot me in the foot by saying that, but A, I don't think most people have watched, what, 40 minutes into me rambling. And B, it's a Dunsparce. Come on now. If you lose to Dunsparce, that one's just on you. So week four, I was slated to play Chimp. Now, Chimp was 3-0. I was 2-1. Chimp was 3-0, winning like 2-0 every single time. And this team is scary. I mean, he has Mega Gallade, Gliscor, Volcarona, Toxapex, Aegislash. That is a very scary defensive core. Mamo, insane whimsicott for eight points is very good value a lolan muck can just face tank everything this is a pretty good team uh bulky as well now with the old team i auto lose to this team i could not break this with the old team but the new team zygarde has a very nice time um zygarde has a very nice time 
if he brings Gliscor Wim. What he did not do is bring Gliscor Wim. I still don't know why he didn't bring Whimsicott. He never said why he never ended up bringing the Whimsicott. Because I don't have a poison type anymore. Because I got rid of Dragalge, and he knew I got rid of Dragalge. So I don't know why he didn't bring Whimsicott still. But Dragal or not Dragalge, Zygarde had a field day if the correct things were dead. It was originally Subcoil. Then I realized, see, there was a debate. Like, we didn't know. Would Subcoil be better, or would Sub D-Dance be better? I like D-Dance because, A, I like more speed, and I like the ability to outspeed Scarf Mammo and possible and outspeed Volcarona, at least if it doesn't have the Quiver Dance up. So, D-Dance gave us some options. Zero Aura was banded, <laughs> which was bold, but I wanted banned to destroy Toxapex Knockoff had a chance to Oko, Aegislash. Um, Fire Punch would just Oko lead whim. So, Zero Aura with Band actually put in work this week if he got the chance to. This thing didn't give him the chance to. Absol was mixed. It had Will O Wisp knockoff out. That was where the main moves it was going to click. It was going to Willow the things it wanted to cripple. It was going to be knocking a lot of stuff off. This mainly switched in on Muck to knock it off mainly and Will O Wisp it. This was basically just meant to cripple Muck. Uh, it had Ice Beam as well because Murkrow actually also dealt with Zygarde. And Gliscor obviously dealt with Zygarde. And this thing was meant to, if Gliscor was in, it could lure the Gliscor in with knockoff uh because if Gliscor gets his toxic orb up if getting knock knocked off doesn't matter anymore so if it can lure the Gliscor in if he knows this thing is knockoff which you usually assume for mega absol and then just kill it with ice beam ice beam just kills it so that was always nice uh but cephalon this besides the perugly set week one or maybe bandit selby this is my favorite set i have made so far air balloon blacephalon I'm going to explain this last because these two aren't also aren't as exciting. Scarf Togekiss, very unexciting Scarf Togekiss, but puts in work. I needed a Scarf Mon. The problem was all my other Mons Scarfed weren't as good. I mean, I needed the extra power on Zara. This at least speed tied Scarf Mammo. Scarf Mammo was his proper bring. He should have brought Scarf Mammo over Scarf or over Band, and he did actually bring Scarf. He brought Scarf Air Ice Shard, actually, so that was a good bluff play by him because he really only needed Icicle Crash and EQ. Scarf Togekiss, um, if with this spread, if Gliscor wasn't Spadef invested, it too code with Air Slash. The only problem was Mega Galley gets inner focus, and it can't I can't air slash hacks the Mega Galley. So I just die to triple axle. Because Dazzling Gleam doesn't kill it. Uh Scizor. However, it would put it in bullet range or bullet punch range for Scizor. This is max HP, max Bedef Scizor. This Scizor switches into Mammo Swine every goddamn time. It switches into Gliscor every time. If Scizor takes over 50% for Mammo Swine, I know for a fact it is banded. If it is not banded, Scizor wins the 1v1 every time. If Scizor is in on Mammo Swine at 100%, 100%, even if it is banded, Scizor wins the 1v1. So Scizor was pretty important this game. It didn't end up being important in the actual battle, but in the mock, Scizor was crucial. Scizor won two of the three mocks, closing the game with Bullet Punch, because how it ended up going, Zygarde would actually just switch in and, like, chip something and then die. Like, Zygarde wasn't actually doing a lot. A big hole would have to open up for Zygarde to put in work, but if Zygarde was able to put in the work, the game would just end. However, the late game scenario I was hoping would happen was the Air Balloon Blacephalon clean. Now, let me explain. Nine times out of ten, the Mammo Swine was going to be choiced. It's either going to be Bandit, Scarf, or Life Orb. Life Orb is pretty fringe. It's going to be Bandit or Scarfed. And if it's clicking EQ, or if Gliscor as well is clicking EQ, Blacephalon could switch it. This, this brings up the why not run Shuckaberry. The thing with Shuckaberry is you can still hit me with the ground move again the next turn when I don't kill you. The thing is Blacephalon doesn't die to icicle crash and ice shard right and you'd have to choice yourself into those air balloon lets it switch into mammoth swine if i know for a fact it is choiced into earthquake usually what would end up happening the, his last three months in the mocks would be like gallade gliscor mammoth swine or if mammoth swine was a remaining final mon with gallade excel etc even like uh 
Toxapex, because with this spread, I get special attack when I kill things because his team was so slow. If Mamoswine kills, let's say, Absol or Zera or a late game with EQ, I know for a fact it is locked into EQ. This is where Blacephalon comes in. You, Blacephalon doesn't reveal the air balloon. until like, He won't know it's air balloon until it's too late. It'll pop out and say, oh, Blacephalon has air balloon. And then he goes, oh shit, I can't hit this Blacephalon. So now Blacephalon gets to click mind blown and delete something. And then it gets a speed boost. And now you cannot out, <laughs> you, you, you just can't kill the Blacephalon. Um, even if I don't, if I don't mind blown, right? Uh, I forget how much Scarf Icicle Crash did, but if I flamethrower something on the switch and then it dies, Mamoswine still, even though it will reset, it still can't come back in and kill the Blacephalon because it has to hit me with an ice move. So I just flamethrower with the Mamoswine and it dies, I get another special attack boost and uh-oh, the game is over. Blacephalon just kills something for free. So it really messes up his late game if Blacephalon just comes in with the air balloon. So I liked the fact that I could know the game was over without him knowing the game was over yet. It was kind of devious. I really liked that set. It never hit the field because Zygarde had other plans. Let me let me just set the scene for you. Absol Toxapex lead. I knock it off. This is a free knockoff. He, I mean, he could have just switched Gallade in here. And even if he did, if he'd switched Gallade in here, that was his optimal play. But he didn't. Anything else gets knocked off. Boom. The crit was nice. It really didn't end up mattering. He knocked off a Mega Absol. Um, he realized that was not a good idea. I could have switched there, but like, yeah. So then I Baton Pass for free into Zygarde. This thing cannot... I have to risk a Scald here. Uh... And even if he scalds me, I could still D-dance back up to neutral. So I risk a Scald Burn. Scald Burn doesn't happen for the first time. No Burn. That was mad risky, but 30% chance, right? 30% chance. In my favor, I take that risk. Gliscor comes in. Free sub on the Gliscor. What's he going to do? EQ me? He has to be running attack for this. I D-dance. You running attack, buddy? Oh, he taunts. Guess what that is? Another free D dance. Oh, I thousand arrows there. Oh yeah, because it's a two cone Gliscor. It doesn't really matter. He EQs, doesn't break this up. So I know this Gliscor isn't running attack, but I also know another thousand arrows kills it guaranteed. Turn six, Gliscor is dead. Let me say that again. Turn six, Gliscor is dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's fucking huge. Gallade comes in. Why I e-speeded there is confusing. Um, that was a misplay. I was expecting triple axle here. What, what you should do is switch in the Gallade, and then you take the Thousand Arrows damage, you live at like 20%, and then you triple axle the Zygarde, and the Zygarde goes away. He then headbutts the sup. He didn't have triple axle. So now it's dead. To be honest, I should have just Thousand Arrow twice there, but it's dead. I switch out. On the Mamoswine coming in. Again, let me put this into perspective. Turn 8. Gallade and Gliscor are dead. Yeah. Ice Shards the Scizor. Scizor comes in this time every, thing every time for free. He's going to switch back out. I go into Zer Aura now predicting the obvious Toxpex. I CC. Uh, that was a pretty good double on me. I CC. To be honest, that was a better play. It looks bad here. But if I Plasma Fist and Mamoswine gets in for free, that's a little bit worse because then he can EQ for free instead of... It would have just been a weird 50-50. CC is fine there. Uh, the Scald, even if he did get the burn, it would have been as bad. But now that's two Scalds with no burns. Make that three Scalds with no burns. A little sad. Uh, here's time to see if Muck is AV. Congratulations. It is. Now I know. Go into Absol. We knock this thing off. Poison Drab. I live one even if he has an attack. This thing has attack. Go into Mamoswine. Free knockoff. Let's go. Scarf's knocked off. He's going to switch back into Toxapex. I know that's coming. I'm going to B-pass. Zygarde comes in. Time to set up for the second time. I mean, it's... Volcarona comes in. Cool. I'm just going to sub. Uh, I, he, he Bug Buzz does go through sub. If he He's going to Quiver Dance. I know even if he Quiver Dances, this thing dies to 2,000 arrows, and I live one. You just hit this thing before it gets to set up. I'm at no point me setting up when I can just hit it. And I'm behind a sub, which means I get a free D-dance. So... Because Bug Buzz wasn't going to kill the sub. 
which means I get a free D-Dance on whatever also comes in. I kind of tunnel vision and then just hit this thing because I didn't realize if this Mammoth Swine is dead, I outspeed Toxapex and I outspeed Muck, but I just D-Dance again. To be honest, D-Dancing here was the big dick play to secure the 6-0, because if I didn't D-Dance here, I'm not 100% sure that Thousand Arrows Oko's Toxapex, and then it just kills me back. I could have just also subbed on the Toxapex. I don't know. I think D-Dancing here secured the 6-0, though, which now that I'm looking at it seems kind of disrespectful, but the D-Dance secured the 6-0 here, even if, so if he just, if I D-Dance, or if I just killed the Mamoswine, Toxpex comes in, kills this, and then Zara Aura spams, uh, Banded, it just spams Banded Plasma Fist until the game ends, I think, is how that ends, so I went 5-0 instead, and this thing doesn't kill everything, but I click E-Speed, because he's probably going to click Ice Shard there. Uh, Muck comes in, I click Thousand Arrows, it's dead. Toxapex comes in, I click Thousand Arrows, and it dies. Oh no, he doesn't kill me, but he's going to get the Skull. The burn now, it doesn't matter, it's too late. Oh, Toxapex wouldn't have even killed me. So I just clicked Thousand Arrows, it's dead. Uh, and that's the game. Poor Blacephalon didn't even hit the field. Cezor didn't get the switch in on Mamoswine all the time. Scarf Togekiss didn't get the flinch something. Like, I wasn't expecting... Zygarde to click 10 moves and just win. But the big nope rope won. Shout out to the nope rope. Which now, if you're doing the math, leaves me at 3 and 1, which is way better than I expected I was going to be. Actually, Pineapple lost before I just lost before I recorded this video. Pineapple lost 3 0, so Pineapple is dropping to 5 differential. So Guller is sitting pretty at 3 0. But I'm 3-1 and one now with a plus 7. I am now in second after this week. Uh, Zach won in a 3-0, so he's going to prove to 3-1 with a plus 2. Uh, so, yeah, unless Lucifer wins in a 5 or 6-0, I have second place secured going into the middle of the season, which to me is shocking. Uh, poor Yarun. Um, he's, just, it's, he's just had it rough. He's just had it rough. Um, unlucky week one, weeks two and week three also got just unlucky. Uh, but I believe in him. I, I believe in the homie. Uh, but at least for me, 3-1 going into the middle of the season is better than I thought was going to happen. Uh, everyone there in that league's pretty supportive. Um, I'm, I'm glad I've been performing well. So... Yeah, I mean, that's the mid-season recap. I think I've been rambling for an hour now. Yeah, it's about to hit an hour now, so this video is going to be almost an hour. But to those that have, for some reason, stayed through this entire video, thank you for watching the mid-season recap. The plan is if I don't top cut, which I will now be a little upset if I don't, because it means I have to fold really hard to not top cut. If I don't top cut, I'm going to do a end of season recap. And I think even if I do top cut, I will do an end of season recap for weeks four through eight. And once I do top cut, I will do HDL style videos for whatever playoff games I have. So a little bit of a taste of HDL content before HDL season four starts up eventually, probably in a few months once Legend Ar like Arceus uh, Mons are integrated into the game. So yeah, again... Thank you to all those that have made it through this hour of rambling. Thank you. Um, looking to bring more heat stuff. I'm having a good time in the TEC. Hopefully I can keep up the winning. Um, remaining games, week five, I play Woex. Week six, I play Pineapple. Seven, I play Dom. And then I play Zach, who has the Dracovish. So my the rest of my schedule is a little spread out, but I've played the top two teams. Like I've, I'm going to play all these three. So, and this, and Braden as well, I played. So my strength schedule is actually pretty solid. So again, I'm happy with how this is going so far. I just have to keep it up. So until next time, peace.